When I say everyone's talking about ChatGPT, I mean everyone is talking about ChatGPT. ChatGPT. And everyone's talking about prompting and how to get the most out of the the model and, and talk to it and get answers. But here at Make Data Useful, we're all about making the data useful. We're about solving problems and automating tasks. And that's where the ChatGPT API, in my view, really shines. Uh, so what we'll do is let's log into the OpenAI Playground, which is this one here. And the first thing you'll be presented with is a system message and also a user and an assistant message. On the right hand side, you'll see a bunch of settings. Um, to be honest, we don't need to play with those too much in this example, but in future videos, as we go through different problems and things we want to automate, um, we'll be working closely with that. So in my view, the best way to learn is to have like a problem statement, some sort of project, something you're trying to solve. Uh, and for me, it's all about messy addresses. So I know there's a Google Maps API and you pay $5 uh, per 1000 requests and it will go off and get all the GPS location stuff and that's awesome but sometimes you just want to clean up that text sometimes you'll get an address and it's just free text handwritten you know typed into a form and it's just a bit messy and what you really want to get back is a really clean maybe JSON payload that has you know street number you know street name state postcode all that good stuff that goes with addresses and that's where you can actually instruct ChatGPT to take on the role uh, of that uh, address cleaner. So let's let's go through a real world example here. So on the left hand side, I've got the system and that's where we're going to tell ChatGPT sort of who it is. So in this example, uh, we'll say you are uh, something like an address cleaner. Okay. Uh, better if I can spell address. You are an address cleaner. Okay. That's a good start. Uh, when we think about this, you will be provided, doo -doo -doo, provided a valid you know, something like this, JSON input, like so. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up this part of the video and then I'm going to talk you through it because it's um, it's a bit boring watching me type it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Okay, cool. So let's go through this. So you are an, you're an address cleaner. You will be provided an input address in a valid JSON format like so. And that format is um, our address and then the free text input that we might have got from a form or some sort of application or some sort of user input. Um, and you will return a valid JSON output like so. Now, if you're not already following where I'm going with this, is this potentially could be built into a very simple Python API, and we can automate a whole bunch of thousands of addresses to be cleaned up um, with this process. So we'll give it an example. So this is how um, the system part of the you know API works. Input address, I've said 242 Exhibition Street, Melbourne. Um, and this is the output address I'm seeking, which is the street number, uh, 242 uh, street name, exhibition street, city, Melbourne, state, Victoria, postcode 3000, country, Australia. So how do we test this? Now, first thing we want to do is we want to add a message. This message is from user. So let's go ahead and give it an address in the format that it requires. So let's go ahead and give it something like, uh, we won't give it the same one again. We'll go 15 John Street Fitzroy. Okay, we'll see if it, we'll give we'll give it a state. We'll be we'll be kind. Uh, 15 John Street Fitzroy. Let's go ahead and submit that. Um, let's go have a little think about it, and let's have a look at how it's gone. So, street number 15, correct. John Street, looking good. City Fitzroy, awesome. State Victoria, correct. Postcode 3065, correct. And country Australia. So I'm pretty impressed with that. That's kind of nice. Uh, let's give it another one. Let's see how we're how we're going with this. Let's give it. Uh, let's give it triple seven. No, let's not just make up an address that doesn't exist, Adam. Let's give it a real address. So let me fish out an address. Let's have a look. So let's go and say Chanston Shopping Center, one of the largest shopping centers around. And your real address is 1341 Dandong Road, Malvern East, Victoria 3145. Okay, so that's the real address. Um, so we won't give it that. We'll give it 341. Um, we'll call it Dandenong. We won't give it road. We won't even give it. We'll give it. Mm, we'll give it Dandenong Road. Oops, Dandenong RD. So three forty one Dandenong RD Victoria. I don't think it's gonna get it, but we'll see how it goes. There's probably multiple of those. Da da da. Three forty one Dandenong Road. Ooh, didn't get city or postcode. That's interesting. So just not enough information. So there you go. So let's go ahead and have a look. It's three forty one Dandenong Road. 
Hmm, I wonder if I can mess around with things like temperature. Let's crank that up. No, that's completely whacked it. Look at that state Victoria zone zero <laughs> nine eight. Which lane? Oh my God, I've never seen anything like this before. Perth. Okay, here's a lesson in temperature. Randomness. Why don't we dial that all the way down to zero and do that again? Yeah, don't mess with randomness, especially when you're trying to make it give you structured outputs. Okay, 341 down the road. Let's give it Malvin. And let's see if it can give me Malvin East. I don't know if it would know that. It should be a common address. Let's have a look. No, nah, it's giving me Malvin, but it, it does look like it's giving me 3145 is what I'm after. And what it's giving me is 3144, which is Malvin. So in that case, if I had given it something like mm, Malvin ES, I wonder if we get that. 341 Danong Road, Malvin ES. Let's give it a go. 341, what have we got? 341, Malvern East. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so got it right that time. So not a perfect science, uh, but it's 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 pretty good. Now, here's where the, the exciting part comes into play. This playground, whilst it's web-based and it's fairly simple to use, I find it quite easy and I think you will too. Uh, in the top right here, if you click on view code, uh, you can pick a number of different languages, but you know we select Python. Uh, and straight away, it's actually written us the Python code to perform this exact task and get that output from the assistant, which is really exciting because looking at this Python, all we would need to do is chuck an F string here and pop in our input address and it will go ahead, where are we? yeah, pop an F string here, sorry, give it an input address and then it will return an output address. In fact, let's just do that now. Okay, I'm in a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I've created a folder called ChatGPT API Examples and it's this easy. So let's go ahead and click new. Let's go ahead and click Python 3. Uh, let's give this thing a name. So let's call it chat GPT address validator. Okay, awesome. Let's go back to our code that it's been provided. Let's go ahead and copy that and let's paste it in now. First thing you'll notice is you do require an OpenAI API key. So you will need to sign up to one of those. I'm gonna go ahead and fish mine out, which is, where are we, do, 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 view API keys. Now I've gotta to remember to blur this part out. Otherwise you guys might have way too much fun with it so let's go ahead and pick i've got a whole bunch here don't ask me why you can always create new um you know call this one uh address validator it's probably good practice to each project give it an api key that way you can track the spend across different projects address validator and let's go ahead and copy that now i'm not going to go to the trouble of adding it to my environment variables what i probably will do just for this video is i will say from get pass import get pass alrighty and then what I might do is I might say something like open AI key uh, equals get pass All right shift enter on that and let's paste that in and shift enter on that I don't want to save it okay awesome so API key has now been saved there remember that is not secure that's still if I was to call upon open AI key I will just see what's in there it just blocks it out to the end user uh, so what I'll do now is I will paste that in there and if I hit the shift enter on that, oh, look, I got an error. Oh, look, <laughs> wouldn't be a video from me if I didn't get an error. So good example, good example of how to not do that. So pip install open AI. Now, before I hit run on that, always just double check uh, that it is the right module name. And how I like to check that is pypy.org. Alrighty, so let's go to pypy.org and let's paste in OpenAI, see what we get back. A whole bunch of weird stuff. Let's go ahead and maybe just Google pypy OpenAI. I'm sure it is, but sometimes the module name will be slightly different to the um, you know, install name. So let's just double check this is the right one. So Python client library for OpenAI. Some things that I like to do is this looks, this looks like the real thing. If I wanted to double check, I can go to their homepage, make sure that is correct. Uh, that's looking good to me. This is openhour-python. Yes, there is, what do we got? Yep, 10,000 stars, looks all legit. So in that case, I'm happy to go ahead and install that. That's installing now. Sometimes you may need to go to kernel and restart the kernel after installation, but it probably will have worked. So let's figure that out. Let's go ahead and shift enter. And just like that, it's running. And let's have a look, ooh, got an error. Ah, no API key provided. That's a lie. Let's have a look at that. Uh, where are we? Ooh, open AI key, open AI, open AI key. Hmm, that's very strange. Just in case, let's go ahead and restart all of that. 
Let's go back to my API keys. Let's copy that one once more. Let's go to get pass and uh, open AI key. Oh, I see. Yes, I see exactly what I've done and I will explain it in just a second. I've made a big, big, big mistake. So what I've done here is I've said, hey, from from the um, environment variables, grab me one called open AI key. I just said at the start of this exercise, I'm not going to create an environment variable. I'm just going to pass it directly in. So let's go ahead and paste that and that will fix it. So shift enter on that and we are running and we're running you tell because there's a little star and now we can grab the response. Okay, let's shift enter on that. And here we have it. There is the response. So a couple of things it's telling us. Uh, first of all, I always like to check Well, what type is this? What are we actually working with here? So we are working with an open AI object. Um, and I'm sure if we went deep into the documentation, we'll figure out how to exactly react with that. But what I'm interested in is probably the response, right? So we've got some choices, um, we've got the role, and then we've got the content. So this looks kind of like a dictionary, right? A bit like a JSON thing. So I reckon I could probably do something like keys. Okay, get rid of that. Um, and that's going to tell me I've got ID, object, created, model, choices, usage. Let's go to choices. Okay, so let's go square brackets and shift enter on that. Okay, awesome. And now we've got the message to roll in the content. So again, if you're unsure, um, straight away I can tell the square brackets around this. So what I might then do, I might say something like, well, what's the length? Just checking it. Okay, it's a length of one. So I can probably just grab index zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So we, we're selecting the first option. Shift enter on that. Uh, and what I'm looking at here is again, some curly braces. I'm guessing it's kind of like a dictionary type object, key value pairs. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna guess, which is always, no, I'm not gonna guess, cause I can see here that it's, no, I'm not gonna guess, cause I'm gonna get it wrong. So let's go ahead and say keys. Again, we've got message, so that's good. So let's go ahead and pop message in there. And now I'm gonna guess, it is assistant as the role. So I know this is the response from ChatGPT and I am going to go content. Uh, and that's pretty good. Now that's looking like a string. Okay, so we're pretty close to where we need to be. So let's go ahead and ask for the type just one more time. Awesome, so it is a string, that's great. Uh, if you watched my previous video, you know we wanna convert that into a JSON object. So there might very well be a way to do this with the OpenAI stuff, but what I might do just for ease of use, I'm gonna go import. Okay, I'm gonna import the JSON module, shift enter on that. I'm gonna call this one, um, I'm just gonna call it content. Uh, okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all give us a bit of room and then from here I'm gonna say Jason dot loads content and now we have a dictionary object. So we're gonna say Something like we'll just call this content again And now what I can do is if I had run this a bunch of different times I can then say content. What was the output address? And now I have a really nicely structured easy to interact with JSON payload um, that's now in a native dictionary format uh, that I can work with. So not perfect, right? There was a whole bunch of stuff there where I got it completely wrong. Now, uh, once I get access to uh, ChatGPT4, it might be a little bit better, but ultimately I think it's pretty good. Um, especially if I had like 10,000 messy addresses, if it was able to you know, accurately do eight or 9,000 of those, that leaves a handful to be cleaned up by a human. Um, so go ahead and give it a try. Uh, let me know how you go in the comments. Um, I'm going to think about more of some of the challenges that people will commonly face in those repetitive tasks and start to make some videos about how we can leverage tools like ChatGPT and other LLMs and other APIs to help solve them. So if this was useful, um, please uh, give it a like. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love if you did. It really helps the channel. Um, and have some fun with some data and let's go make it useful. Thanks, guys.